Homo Squad. It's your boy Homo Ziggy. We back here with another death battle. And today we got anime versus comics, which is Goku versus Superman, Dragon Ball versus DC Comics. Now, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure, right? There's always been the anonymous question and such because we all know about how Goku is the most powerful being. There's always that like meme around or so or like that trivia question or whatever. Hell, at one point, if I can, if y'all remember, for those of for my nerdcore friends out there, Game Boy Jones literally created a song called But Can They Be Goku? Literally listing off many characters from like either different animes different cartoons different comics hell at one point he even freaking features wwe legend the undertaker and paul bearer and such my wrestling right there so hey there's always been that question about who can beat but can they beat goku and all that so and then with superman and such we all know about his power and shit so hey it's a battle of the best so we just gonna go straight right into it make sure you like comment and subscribe follow me on my socials up there and without further ado let's get in the video because I guarantee you i don't know who honestly i could guess but i don't want to look like an ass so i'm not even going to want to guess but hold up change something here put it on 720 right now oh this episode of death battle is sponsored by better help Son Goku, Superman. It's time to answer the ultimate question, and we're taking it all into play. We're examining Superman's extensive mainline comic book canon. Given Dragon Ball Super's contentious continuities, we'll include all three just to be thorough, plus Dragon Ball heroes. They're going to He's everything. Time boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win. Better get some water, because this is going to be a long one. Far away, in an enchanted land, an old master found a boy and marveled at his uncommon strength. This is the story of Son Goku. Chances are, if you've watched some localized anime, you can thank this guy. Inspired by martial arts films and his wife's interest in Chinese culture, Akira Toriyama crafted the story and the character that would define generations to come. Dragon Ball! Kakarot was born a low-class Saiyan on the planet Vegeta, narrowly escaped its destruction by Frieza, and was raised on Earth by happy old Grandpa Gohan. Not just raised, but trained. Gohan began Goku's teaching in martial arts, which he would find to be his true calling <laughs> under the guidance of Then about not a bad, not a bad dad, you guys are mean. <laughs> Sorry. Nah, nigga, let's be honest. As much as we say that he's the ultimate protector and all, but let's face it. Which kind of a dad would literally let them go, let their young ass son, not even turn it into the teens yet, but when he was like, 10 or 11 years old, make him go fight freaking monsters and alien beings. Like, I'm sorry. You can't tell me nothing. I don't care if you're the one who protects us all, nigga. You making your own son go through these battles and he ain't even freaking in his teens yet? Come the hell on, man. At that point, I'm looking at you at a different type of... Come on now. Oh y'all, this always happens. Comes to my OBS, wanted to trip out on me. Began Goku's teachings in martial arts, which he would find to be his true calling under the guidance of Master Roshi. Specifically, he learned the Kame Senen Ryu style, which focuses on discipline and tenacity, 
both of which strongly define Goku's character. The more he learned, the more he wanted to improve. This little low-class monkey boy would prove <laughs> that hard work and dedication can beat raw talent. Within hey. just a few years, he was so strong, the only worthy teachers left were gods. And in talking Literally. Gods, but mostly <laughs> gods. When you're training to dodge lightning, you know you're a few leagues over everyone else. He did have a slight advantage. Saiyans are naturally superhuman. They also take Nietzsche's famous words, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, very, very literally. Shout out to Katy Perry. <laughs> It's almost unfair how much of a boost in power they get after they're hurt. While Saiyans like Vegeta may have abused this trait, it suits Goku. No matter how many times you knock him down, he will get back up strong. Look, and there's all, and I hear that there's this like rumor, or it's not even like a rumor, like a little theory about how it's like PTSD, cause, oh no, oh wait, that's Gohan. But it has to be like, but oh no, it's about like some kind of disease. Cause let's be honest, you have that type of mentality and such. I'm just saying, it's kind of crazy that the amount of times you get knocked down and such, and you getting your ass beat every single time, but you don't want to quit. Just saying, kind of crazy. That could just be me, but. Ain't no way I'm finna just take a beating and no matter how many times you knock him down, he will get back uh, just up me. longer than before. Sorry. It helps that he knows so many cool combat moves, like the Kamehameha! An incredibly powerful technique that focuses one's key into a single point for a devastating beam. So challenging, it took Roshi decades to master, but Goku got it in like five seconds. It's incredibly versatile, hmm. with over 50 different variations. I'm for example, did. Goku can curve the beam after firing, or even shoot it from his feet. But unlike most Saiyans, he doesn't just key. use key to blow shit up. Moves like the Solar Flare, Energy Landmine, and God Bind require a lot more strategy and planning. Because while Goku isn't exactly books, rock, paper, sit, rock, scissors, paper. I know that's the game. Don't, that was the game I'm doing that rock, paper, scissors, shoot, and such. But well, rock, scissors, paper. Isn't it rock, paper, scissors? I don't know. Yeah, that's basically all Goku is. One thing though, that nigga sometimes is not right in the head. But then again, aren't they? Most of them aren't even right in the head. Cause I'm telling you, no right human being will ever. You know what? Let me just let me just zip my mouth. Get it up. And let they do what they want to do. Because at the end of the day, you think any regular human being is going to fight any other bad guy out there? Much less an alien bad guy? Oh, thank you. God bind require a lot more strategy and planning. Because while Goku isn't exactly book smart, he is a genius when it comes to martial arts. He doesn't mm. just train to conquer his opponents, but to conquer himself. He's also got some different moves, like trapping you in a rice cooker. <laughs> well, pretty much any container could be used for the Mafaba ceiling technique. Then there's Kaioken, aka Instant Steroids. Goku's multiplied his power by 20 with it before, and in a movie, he even got it up to times 100. What a badass! The Genki Dama, or Spirit Bomb, is potentially his strongest attack, but it yeah. requires considerable time, unlike yeah. instant transmission. Yeah, that shit takes w Like, trust me, I remember at once episode where he say he, he's still in this light little chance saying, I call upon this spirit, I call upon this. Like, bro, at that point, nigga, you already dead. Even if I'm far away, and you're right over there. The minute you aren't doing that stance and it's taking so long, I'm already, I already either sliced you with a sword, through a comic, through a like, like, fire beam, laser beam at you. No matter what, I already got you and such. So yeah, that takes way too long to even absorb and such. Much less even try to do. Oh, I'm sorry. He... I would never want you to ever use a spirit bomb and such. That shit would take way, way, way too long to even do. Or spirit bomb is potentially his strongest attack, but it requires considerable time. Unlike instant transmission, which is a teleport that's... Uh, 
instant. The way it works is Goku detects another person, like a sort of beacon, then teleports to their location by launching himself through an alternate dimension where time stands still. Yes, according to the Daisenshu guidebook, it's a dimension hop. You can actually <laughs> see this in between space in some movies and games. And the dubs wanted us to think it shot Goku's molecules around at light speed. <laughs> Silly English. The dubs did more than that. In fact, early dubs of Dragon Ball Z tried to rewrite Goku as a Superman figure. Even his famous speech on Namek about being the light in the darkness was originally about him coming to terms with his Saiyan heritage. Accepting his anger and pride, avenging his people by defeating Frieza, and declaring mm. himself the Super Saiyan. Hell yeah! If there's any scene that deserves the word epic, it's when he went gold. Super Saiyan and its sequels all have official power multipliers, but they threw us for a loop by turning Goku into a god. Super Saiyan God certainly changed things up. Goku gained Divine Ki, a pure form of Ki unspoiled by mortal hands. Unlike normal Ki, it can't be detected and appears to have healing properties. Kinda like Senzu beans. Did you know one Senzu has so much healing juice it can regenerate a person's lost limbs? They're missing out. God Goku reached a level of power <laughs> that could compete with the greatest of deities, shattering the whole universe with a single clash on his first go. Dragon Ball's cosmology is unique. This model is said to be an accurate depiction of Universe 7, but there's a wrinkle there. When all of humanity went to heaven, because Boo went Boo Zerk, Fidel commented that heaven is just as large as a universe, and the Daisenshu backs her up. And, uh, that's heaven, big planet. So let's scale things up with that in mind. Doing so would make Universe 7 over 1,500 times larger than our own observable universe. And Goku could destroy that much the first time he went God. And he didn't lose that power. He learned how to use it even better, even in base form. Now, imagine how much stronger he became when he stacked Super Saiyan on Super Saiyan God and became Super Saiyan Blue. Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan. Yeah, not saying that. Or after he <laughs> trained with some almighty angel. There is two. Like, look at this. Look at how many Super Saiyan transformations. Super Saiyan full power. Super. Spirit Bomb Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 2, Super Saiyan 3, Super Saiyan 4, Super Full Power, Super Saiyan Limit Breaker, basically Super Saiyan 4, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan, Ultra, like, it's so hard to even con- No, I'm sorry. <laughs> and look, it's not about even if I didn't watch as- I didn't watch Dragon Ball Heavy like that, I remember- Watching it and such, but not like heavy like that. But I'm just saying, I just already know Super Saiyan. I just know about just going Super Saiyan and all that. I didn't know there was like multiple forms and shit. So, Jesus Christ. <laughs> that is too many Saiyans on once. That is... They go, what? I'm sorry, but God damn. Too many saints transformations. Too many. Too, too, too. Too many saints. Or after he trained with some almighty angels. Or when he perfected the blue hairdo and stacked Kaioken on top of that. Goku has certainly performed great feats with God Key. Breaking through Hit's time stop by forcing himself into the future, holding off Infinite Zamasu, who was a sentient timeline, defeating Jiren, who shook the entire world of Void by just walking. He even tried out Hakai, the destruction god move that nopes you out of existence, your being and your soul erased from all of time and space, culminating in his greatest form, Ultra, Ultra Instinct. Instinct. Chrome Goku isn't a normal transformation, it's a state of mind. Hold on, give me one second. Ultra Instinct is the highest peak of martial arts, subconsciously making optimal choices because you're in the zone, doing without thinking. Something Goku has always been trained to do. Technically, it can be used in any form, but when perfected, Autonomous Ultra Instinct makes you untouchable. No matter what comes his way, Goku will automatically dodge, block, and counter to the best of his ability, even Crazy. pushing his body well beyond his physical limits. So far beyond, in fact, Ultra Instinct can summon a massive avatar to defend him when his own body can't. That sounds really intense! It is, which is why he's developed incremental versions of it for specific uses. It's extremely difficult to maintain the full form for long. 
until you get to Dragon Ball Heroes, aka Dragon Ball Fan Fiction Gone Kaioken times a thousand. <laughs> While technically a different continuity, CC Goku is functionally a stand in for the mainline Goku. His history and powers are the same, making his story just as much of a what if scenario as the multiple super continuities. The only real CC Goku is an alternative continu continuation. Continuation, sorry, of the super anime Xeno Goku experienced GT and attained the same power it breaks. Beated universe busters like Mega Shenron, Steelus, and Chamel. Chamel. DC Goku defeated Xeno Goku, strongest. Sorry, I had to read that. Look, I'm trying to make sure I learn as a lot, so don't blame me. Go on, you don't get on me. Making his story just as much of a what if scenario as the multiple super continuities. The only real difference is Toriyama's not really involved. This Goku used instant transmission to teleport through time and dimensions. He outsped a god who could see the future. He defeated Dark King Fu, who was gonna rewrite the entire universe. Hell, this series even makes GT cool. Xeno Goku can break space time just by going Super Saiyan 4. Looking back at that goofy monkey boy chopping wood and. Hey, who are you calling goofy monkey boy? It's almost overwhelming to think about how far Goku has come, how much he's had to face. But no matter the challenge, he takes it head on and pushes through, showing everyone everywhere how to go even further beyond and they want to put a freaking and they want to rewrite all of that for a damn children's episode next year yeah they have definitely that's what, this is why i feel like and like i said even though i didn't like particularly was in in depth with Dragon Ball like that. I watched it like for the nostalgia act, like the OG ones, like this and such. And they were way, and they are a lot more better. So the fact and so the fact that they're gonna do like a glam kids episode for it just to gravitate to the youngs, the young audience, even they ain't. I bet you, even they're not gonna like that. Guarantee you that. But it is what it is. I guarantee you it's it going to flop. going to flop on their ass. Faster than a speeding bullet. Please. More powerful than a locomotive. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Jeez, just a locomotive? People in the 40s needed bigger imaginations. Born on the far off world of Krypton, the infant Cal L was sent to Earth by his parents, narrowly escaping Krypton's destruction. Raised by farmers as Clark Kent, he eventually became Superman, and champion of the oppressed, the man of tomorrow. If you've only seen the movies, forget him. Comic book Clark's <laughs> not the perfect Boy Scout, and he's definitely not Jesus. Wait, weren't the guys who made him Jewish? Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster were sons of Jewish immigrants, and grew up in a time when anti-semitism went largely unchallenged. And then that ugly mustache showed up. Understandably <laughs> seeking escape from some truly terrifying horrors, the pair created Superman to be a simple solution to overwhelming problems. A hero who could defeat any evil by just punching it. Hell yeah, that's how I live my life. That's great. That is crazy that the creators of Superman were Jewish and hey, that just goes to show you sometimes when you it's basically like this to me I've always wondered even though it was by Jewish immigrants but the fact that it was from Jewish people who created Superman can I say it does not shock me whatsoever sorry it doesn't cause I figured <laughs> well not really but you know what I mean were sons of Jewish immigrants and grew up in a time when anti-semitism went largely unchallenged. And then that ugly mustache showed up. Yeah, Understandably you. seeking escape from some truly terrifying horrors, the pair created Superman to be a simple solution to overwhelming problems. A hero who could defeat any evil by just punching it. Hell yeah, that's how I live my life. After <laughs> almost nine decades, Superman has been many things. <laughs> At the core, his story is
of the whole favorite food, beef bo- Blah, blah, blah. Hey, hear me? Beef borgion with ketchup, hobbies, linguistics, robotics, zoology. But the love interest, Lois Lane, Lana Lang, Lala Lel, Lisa Liesel, Lisa Liesel, Lisa Landis, Lori Lamaris, Duma Linen, Lionel, Laya Leral, and then Wonder Woman. What the hell with the whole L's? What in the L? And then Wonder Freaking Woman. What the hell? Not actual L. Too many L's. That damn nigga, you was a pimp or something? So many damn women's after almost nine she with elves superman has been many things at the core his story is one of a refugee a child who lost his home left to the mercy of alien people this new world accepted him raised him gave him a new home because helping others in need is the right thing to do that's mm -hmm. why he became a superhero the first superhero everything's gotta start somewhere but he was the first one to really take up i mean not literally it Took a while, actually, before he learned how to fly. In fact, when Clark discovered his Kryptonian heritage, he struggled to accept it and subconsciously developed mental blocks, severing him from his true power, which he would uncover throughout his life. He's strong enough to shoulder press the weight of the Earth for five days straight, or crush coal into perfectly cut diamond. That's not how that works. He's fast <laughs> enough to reach the, the end of the universe in seconds, or even break the bonds of infinity. Wait, he can do all that, but Batman can punch him out? Really? You're probably thinking of Elseworld stories outside main canon like Dark Knight Returns. It's a good question, though. Superman's powers have fluctuated over time for a variety of reasons. However, for Death Battle, we take the characters at their best. Yeah, like how his breath is so powerful he can sneeze away a solar system or blow <laughs> air cold enough to freeze ghosts. Speaking of, his X-ray vision doesn't just see through walls. He can see through your own body and mind to examine your soul. And yet, he can't. Oh. So that's why freaking family. I know I'm gonna. This is like a little funny thing. So that's why with freaking Family Guy and such, where they played a little. It was like a dark humor joke where with the Superman, where Clark and such in his alter ego. He went up to go see these three girls. And then freaking. The, one of the ladies saying about how they got breast cancer because of this nigga seen through them and shit. And then now, and then when he said, first every girl that I met, now you guys. That's why. Hey, Seth MacFarlane. Don't think he don't know his stuff. You're probably thinking of Elseworld stories outside main canon like Dark Knight Returns. It's a good question, though. Superman's powers have fluctuated over time for a variety of Man reasons. knows his stuff. However, for Death Battle, we take the characters at their yeah, best. best. Yeah, like how his breath is so powerful he can sneeze away a solar system. Or Bless you. Or cold enough to freeze ghosts. Speaking of, his x-ray vision doesn't just see through walls. He can see through your own body and mind to examine your soul. And yet, he can't see through lead. That's okay, though. He can just burn through it with his face. Since he gets his power from the yellow sun, his heat vision burns with the fire of a star. And if beams aren't enough, he can blast it out of his whole body for a super flare. It used to totally drain him, but he's learned how to control it. Simply put, Superman's powers defy physics. My favorite examples of this are when he rebuilt the reality warping miracle machine from from memory, or punched Brainiac so hard every version of him felt it through all of time, or when he gained 10 years worth of medical training through only 5 minutes of reading, and then successfully performed lung surgery. Nice. My Ouch. favorite example is when he smelled brownies in North Dakota from orbit. Even beyond his powers, Superman is a novice when it comes to the intricacies of battle. 
He's trained in crypto Not even going X. Which uses G, or as they call it, Shriar. He even got summoned to Asgard to fight demons with Thor for a thousand years. Superman can resist being erased from existence, such <laughs> as tanking Darkseid's Omega Beams. Even Retcon and the Time Trapper, both of which hijack and alter timelines, can't touch him. Not because of his powerful mental defenses or healing factor, but because he's a cosmic linchpin in the greater metaverse. Timelines literally revolve around him. But let's address the S-shaped elephant in the room. You may have noticed we've covered a variety of Superman eras. Superman, and DC Comics as a whole, have gone through multiple retcons. Golden Age, Silver Age, Pre-Crisis, Post-Crisis, New 52, Rebirth, and so on. It would help to know which so one is shit. the main Superman, right? Well, they all are. Yeah, they all are. Are. literally. He basically said everything in the main series is kinda canon, even when he had wacky powers like changing his appearance with a super muscular control. Ew. I guess he can still phase through almost anything, even people. Look, if you really dig into it, this isn't what? new. Plenty of characters have recalled events from supposedly retcon timelines before. Yeah, post-crisis soups did start as less powerful than in pre-crisis, but that was because of the mental blocks. Though he's <laughs> not a complete composite, there's so many other Supermen out there. Future Superman, Big Robot Superman, Kami Superman, hey, Dinosaur Superman, hey, yo. there's a bunch. Still, this new canon has affected his abilities. For, For the example, power of comics. <laughs> can effortlessly travel through time. And while Superman's powers stem from the... It's crazy that in just comics, you can literally have one character be a whole lot of ish. Freaking Dinosaur Superman, what the hell? Dinosaur Superman. I'm done. I'm not even gonna question. Most of the times, like I said, it's comics, so... What's the point of even trying to question it? Because it just makes sense to them, I guess. So. Golden Age, Silver Age, Pre-Crisis, Post-Crisis, New 52, Rebirth, and so on. It would help to know which one is the main Superman, right? Well, they it's all are. Yeah, the latest reboots basically said everything in the main series is kind of canon. Even <laughs> when he had wacky powers like changing his appearance with a super muscular control. You. I guess he can still phase through almost anything, even people! Look, if you really dig into it, this isn't new. Plenty of characters have recalled events from supposedly retcon timelines before. Yeah, post-crisis soups did start as less powerful than in pre-crisis, but that was because of the mental blocks. Though he's not a complete composite, there's so many other Supermen out there. Future Superman, <laughs> Big Robot Superman, Kami Superman, <laughs> Dinosaur Superman, there's a bunch. Still, this new ah, cannon Superman. has affected his abilities. For example, he and other Kryptonians can effortlessly travel through time. And while Superman's powers stem from the Earth's yellow sun, exposure to a blue star increases them even further. In fact, upon visiting a white star, he attained a whole new level of power. When that old baldy Lex teleported him to another galaxy, Superman just popped back up, saying space-time has lost its meaning for him. He really just said that. Remember, Superman defies physics. Like when he used heat vision to restart the universe by making an all new Big Bang. We've seen that his universe has a radius of at least a hundred trillion mm. light years, but we can calculate a more exact figure. The DC universe is 15 billion years old and expands at 60 trillion light years per half second. 16. This means its radius must be over 50 non-million light years across. Non-million. Okay, now y'all, this is what the thing I always want to say with death, death battle, the death battle cast. How the hell can y'all be, y'all be making all these damn numbers up? I'm sorry. 15, 56.79 million. All I know what after, all I, the only millions I know is million, billion, and trillion. Like, yeah, them, them, all, if not trillion, just at least million and billion. What the frick? Not nil. I'm done. Freaking not million. What the hell? The hell is a not million? Y'all gotta. Y'all just be making up numbers. I'm sorry. And expands at 60 trillion. Y'all just be making up numbers. This means its radius must. I know it may be canon, but I just feel like y'all just making up numbers. 
None the what? That's yeah. 31 zeros and soups Thirty make that happen. Well, about one fifth of it. That's still immense power, but if you want something bigger, here's the Anti Monitor blasting Golden Age Superman with all the energy of the antimatter universe. And then Superman, you know, punched him so hard it kickstarted another one of those reboots. Now, Superman does have weaknesses. There's the Krypton, force, of course. And exposure to red starlight can fade his powers over time. Mm. Not all at once. He has been able to move planets around while under a red. We all know, like, the green one and such, so it's different ones. So, green Krypton, green Kryptonite fatally saps strength. The red Kryptonite creates random mutations. The black causes murderous insanity. And the gold permanently removes peril. So, let me. Hello. Why is it that the black one has to. Cause murderous insanity, huh? Why can't it be the white? Nah, no, shut up. <laughs> Ain't gonna be one of these woke, like these woke people and whatnot and such talking about, oh, the black. Like, shut the fuck up. It's, it's freaking comic books, okay? Shut the hell up. If y'all wanna ruin comic books for us to get the heck out of here. That's why nobody gonna want to be friends with y'all, for those who do that. Witnesses. There's kryptonite, of course, and exposure to red starlight can fade his powers over time. Not all at once. He has been able to move planets around while under a red star. So... And everyone knows Superman can't deal with magic, but it's more accurate to say he doesn't have any special resistances to it. He's defeated plenty of magic users before, even Shazam. Superman challenges the idea that absolute power corrupts absolutely. He's the goodest good guy of them all, but there is nuance to being good. Even if he is the ultimate power fantasy, unstoppable and incorruptible. Such as when he took on the World Forger, one of the most powerful reality shapers in all of creation. Who was in the sixth dimension, crafting a whole new multiverse to replace the one Clark calls home. Who's gonna stop him? Superman could, and the Forger knew it. So he was trapped on a world with a sun so distant he could never escape. Or so the Forger thought. Instead, Clark found the strength he needed to fly at that sun, dip through a ton of stars, KO the World Forger, and shatter his new multiverse with a single punch. Because that's Superman, a simple solution to overwhelming problems. He's the kind of person to save a cat from a tree, answer Christmas cards from strangers, and tow hundreds of planets to a new galaxy all in the same day. What's not to like? Truth and justice has no better champion than the Man of Steel. Crazy. This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by BetterHelp. Wiz, it's getting to be the holiday season again. Shout out to the ad, but any of it all that. A death Battle! Alright. Let's see who we win. Alright, let me see. Because at this point, I don't even care about if my streak or whatnot, but if I had to guess who's going to win. I'm going to go with. Superman. I'm gonna go with Superman. But y'all let me know who y'all think wins down in the comments below. Saying it could be I I could be totally wrong because I but it's time I feel like it's gonna be Superman. Let's get it. Damn, we just started our no build up or anything, just straight to it. Today's the day we'll finally settle who's stronger. Mm. <laughs> if you say so, <laughs> I told you, there's been Dang. Oop, 
It's a transmission on the ass. Hmm. I'm doing just fine. Super Saiyan Blue. I gotta say, the freaking music that's playing in this and such, epic as hell. <laughs> this nigga just did the one punch. This nigga just did the one inch punch and shit. I'm done. Why are you copying off one punch, man? Leave them alone. That's not your shit. Stick to your own. <laughs> oh, was not one punch. I don't know if it was one punch or not, but. You know what I mean. Miss it. Ooh. Oops. <laughs> well, I guess we can wish it back later. World made of cardboard. All right. You so dumb motherfucker. Is dumb. That's when you know you can't. You gotta watch out for niggas like this. If he can just literally go, whoop. oops, destroy the planet. And then this nigga Goku gonna go say about, ah, we could just wish it back up later. Nigga, what? How, can, how the hell can you wish up back a planet after you just done destroyed it? I don't care what, look, I don't care what your universe is and all that and such. It's not like you can go like that. So shut the fuck up. Hey, nigga just went, look at that. I guess we can wish it back later. World made of cardboard. All right, I'll show you just how powerful I really am. <laughs> Damn, nigga, we like a job, boys. Damn. Damn, I like that how we switch in different universes. Well, what hmm. do you think? <laughs> that was awesome! <laughs> nice suit! Oh, uh, thanks. Kryptonian fabric. My mom made it for me. <laughs> Watch your instinct! Yeah, I feel like when he. Once that Ultra Instinct comes in. I don't think Superman's gonna win this one. Well, it is what it is. Fabric. But who knows? He could be true me. Damn. Nigga said, Nyum. but then again, whatever. Hmm. Jesus Christ, Day damn. Jesus Christ! This is insanity! This is freaking insanity! Yeah, just in that. We darkness. We in dark.
Oh. Huh? Ah, oh, darn it. <laughs> Almost had me there. That was actually pretty fun. I was right. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, it sure was. But I'll be stronger next time. I look forward to it. it, it that, that's nice. The different. Let's go again. You're on. The different universes. But hey, I guess I was wrong. That's it. Let's go. Final indisputable answer. Uh, Superman. People are gonna argue this one forever. There's yeah, they will. So they will. This battle to go, especially with all the other continuities. Yeah, for real. Goku would kick almost every other Superman's ass, except for the main one. There's a lot yeah, of cover, so let's address the five. I guess it's true, cause let's face it, you can have many varieties of the main character and such, cause you always hear this saying. Flattery will get you nowhere. So even though there's many copies of the certain original, nothing is gonna beat the OG one. Nothing, no matter what it is. You can try a whole lot of times with certain copies and such, and you can probably defeat them copies. But the main one, uh-uh, you ain't never gonna beat. So it is what it is. Who am I kidding? People are gonna argue this one forever. There's yep. so many ways this battle could go, especially with all the other continuities. Yeah, for real, Goku would kick almost every other Superman's ass, except for the main one. There's a lot to cover, so let's address the five categories most representative of this fight. Right. First up, strength. Both could hit hard enough to break or make their whole universe. Literally. Or take it in stride, like when Superman got smacked by the whole antimatter universe. At most, Dragon Ball's universe is 1,505 times larger than our own. But based on the DC Universe's officially established age and rate of expansion, it is 1.6 Vigentillion times larger. Over a zillion times more than Goku's. At some point, you reach a number high enough that it just doesn't mean anything anymore. Exactly. And Goku's obviously gotten stronger since the Beerus fight. Even by billions or trillions of times, he's defeated Jiren, Broly, Moro, and Fu. But even if we highball Goku by quadrillions or quintillions of times, the gap is just too much. Especially with the World hey. Forger feat. Not even heroes compete with that. Superman takes the edge in strength. But strength mm. isn't everything. Let's talk speed. Both are obviously way faster than light. But yeah, Superman but crossed that mega-sized universe of his I bet you that instant transmission. Faster than infinity. The instant he can keep up with the Flash, whose speed is so ludicrous it's unquantifiable. Don't count Goku out though. Flying across the entire afterlife in base form and outspeeding Eos's future sight takes some crazy speed. Fighting Zamasu as an omnipresent merged timeline also implies immeasurable speeds. That combined with instant transmission and oh, that's right. instinct Told you. probably keep up. Maybe. Quantifiably, Superman is faster, but both are immeasurable. The safest bet here is to say they tie in speed. Especially okay. when we look at skill. Goku's a martial arts master. He's definitely got better battle instincts. He Ooh. wants to fight and is dedicated to his training. While yeah. Superman sees yeah, basically, when it comes down to that part, the skill, martial art techniques, like you're trained to fight. Whenever you're trained, so whenever you're trained to fight and such, you're nine times out of ten gonna win. So probably gonna give that they're probably gonna give that one to goku has to when you're trying to fight rather than defending oh yeah because there's nothing wrong with trying to defend and all but when once you're trained Better or something instincts. he wants to fight and is and that means that you training. want to fight well, superman sees yeah. training as a means to an end superman's knowledge in pressure point combat and kryptonian martial arts are impressive but he's only used them a few times exactly it's disingenuous to say he's an equivalent master at that so goku wins in skill, i told you but not necessarily an experience don't get it wrong superman is not a mindless brawler he's trained with batman yeah. and wonder woman he's even defeated martial arts experts like cobra without powers goku has spent decades training but superman battled norse demons for a thousand years he's also astonishingly brilliant like when he reassembled the reality warping miracle machine from memory experience obviously goes to superman okay but perhaps less obvious is our last the power power 
powers. Hakai, Spirit Bomb, Mafuba, Instant Ours. Transmission, God Key, God Bind. How does Goku not win with those? In Dragon Ball, Key he is dependent on physical ability, so it's different from magic. God Key is simply pure Key. And magic isn't an auto win against Superman anyway, whose mm -hmm. greater strength could break out of something like the God Bind. Mafuba and the Spirit Bomb would take way too long, and Goku's never successfully used Hakai before. Even if he did land it, Superman's impossible to erase from reality. Like, he's tanked Omega Beams, which do the same thing as Akai. Superman can time travel, countering instant transmission similar ability from heroes. And regarding teleporting him to a red star, ignoring the fact that Sans can't breathe in space, though Goku's certainly tough enough to withstand a vacuum, instant transmission requires <laughs> another person to act as a beacon. He can't just warp to any red star. Even if he did, Superman could simply fly away and find a blue or white star for a supercharge. And Goku could not pull off the same trick twice, as Superman could phase through his attacks. So, that's it then. Clark has too many counters, so he takes the edge in powers and it's over. Well, I think there's something else. Goku versus Superman breaches a broader zeitgeist. It's more than just two characters fighting. For a whole generation, especially in 90s America, superheroes represented an unyielding status quo. Spider-Man, Batman, Captain America rarely change who they are or what they believe in. For a lot of people, that's tiring, and Superman is an icon of that. Then along came anime. There was a yep. whole other world of ideas and stories for us sheltered Westerners to experience, and Goku's an icon of that. True. So while many see this as a the East versus character, the West, I wonder why he was saying the East versus the West thing. And if that's what's at stake, who wants Goku to lose? Uh. You're sure you're not overthinking this? It's not our intent, but it does call into question what we're doing. How can people agree with what we take as fact when fiction relies on interpretation? Are we stripping characters of their importance by simplifying them to contestants in a vacuum of violence? And if so, then what's the point? Because it's exactly. fun, Wiz! Damn it, man! There's more than one way to appreciate something! We're mm. having a great time talking about awesome characters and slamming action figures together. And that's okay! Yeah, yeah you're right. I'm mm. just saying, no matter who you prefer, that battle was super, man. That's the worst pun. Well, mm. it fits them both. It's so lame. I don't see you doing any better. I do the math, the pun's your job. Well, maybe if you math as good as I punned, then <laughs> Goku would have won. What is wrong with you? Whatever. Hi, I'm Ben, the voice of Wiz. Thank you so much for watching. We are about to announce the next episode, but All right, let's we see that, if you're not the a next one. member yet, click that join button below. See what you're missing. So who we got next? Next time. Season 10 finale. Okay. But look. At the end of the day. All I'm gonna say is, I'm kind of glad that I want that. But like they said, at the end of the day, even if you saw one, one, even if you saw who your favorite was win and such, and your favorite loss, at the end of the day, people are always gonna battle this thing. Because it's anime versus comics. Like people are always gonna talk about how, at the end of the day, with Goku versus whoever and such, especially the Goku versus Superman debate, people are always going to have their opinions on it and such, and hey, it is what it is. But either way, glad that I won that one, finally, after losing uh, the last couple ones and such. Or not even win, depending on what my streak is and such, it is what it is. But either way, y'all let me know what y'all thought about this down in the comments below, who... Who you thought should have won. Who you thought should have lost. And hey. If you made it to the end. Comment down below. Insanity. Because that whole entire battle was insanity. From the theme music to the battle. Everything. But either way. It's been your boy Homo Ziggy signing out. Stay positive. Keep the vibes up. There you go.